Oh, it is that time of year. The coughs are going around. You never know what kind of virus your child could come home with. Across the country, RSV cases in kids are surging. So today, we're talking about the virus, how to recognize it, and what to do about it. So for today's To Your Wellbeing, we're joined by Dr. Michael Cinnamon with Cone Health Children's Services. All right, let's first and foremost, a lot of people probably have heard RSV. Maybe they don't know what it stands for, so let's just talk about what is RSV. All right, sure. RSV stands for Respiratory Syncytial Virus. And it is very simply another respiratory virus, like rhinovirus or the common cold. COVID is a respiratory virus. Influenza is a respiratory virus. These are all called respiratory viruses because they pass generally through respiratory secretions. When we cough or sneeze, billions of little particles are spread out and get in other people's mouth and noses, and that's how they catch them. Okay. So, and uh -huh. they typically cause respiratory symptoms, cough and congestion, runny nose, that sort of thing. So is it just the time of year that we're seeing this explosion of cases or is there something more to it? Well, this year there is a, bit, a little bit more to it. Normally respiratory viruses are worse in the winter time when it really gets cold out. We typically see the flu and we definitely see RSV in small children in the winter time. This year, we are seeing it much greater numbers, much earlier in the season. And people don't understand why that is very well um, but it's definitely the case we are, we are it is out in mass numbers. All right, so are we talking about kids of all ages are at risk, or are we talking more infants and newborns at the most risk? Well, RSV in particular um, is what we would call ubiquitous. It's everywhere. Most children, literally close to 100%, have been exposed to it or caught it in the first two years of life. So people of all ages get it all the time. And it's typically, again, a, a relatively manageable cough and cold, like you wouldn't know it from any other cough and cold. It's really the little ones typically um, that are most at risk for getting what, what we talk about, which is really difficulty breathing or needing to be in the hospital. Mm -hmm. And so do kids get it just like the common cold? I mean, is it just the coughing and the touching and that kind of thing? Yep, you would never know the difference between it and many other respiratory viruses. They're all in a otherwise healthy, probably, you know, a teenager. You could get it and you just, you'd have your cough, cold, maybe a little bit of a fever, but probably not. It would last a few days and go away. You'd probably be no worse for the wear. Okay, so that's kind of like a scary thing to me that you know that it can develop into something much worse for the younger kids, but it sounds and looks the same until a certain point. And so what is that that point or before we even get to that point, can we know what it is? What can parents or caregivers be on the lookout for? Um, well, that's really the important thing because it's gonna be like any other cold. You really can't, um, even we can't really differentiate between one respiratory virus and another. But in small children, particularly under the ages of two and certainly under the ages of one, it starts with cough, congestion, and fever, but it can quickly develop into difficulty breathing. And that what happens is the virus doesn't just stay in your nose and throat, it gets into your, your breathing tubes, your airways, and causes basically what will be akin to an, almost an asthma attack. Um, and the, uh, the pathology is the same. So you've got inflamed airways and little babies are trying to breathe through these small tubes into having straining and working very hard to breathe. So that's really what parents need to be alert to. Um, the cough, the congestion, the sort of misery, not eating well, fussiness are all very, very common. It's when it gets to be, when you notice your child actually having trouble breathing or breathing fast, that's when they need to go see their doctor or seek medical attention because that is something that can become problematic. Okay, so either breathing fast or having trouble breathing. So if this yes. is something that happens like in the middle of the night, is this a take the child into the emergency room or something that can wait until the morning and you call your pediatrician? Well, every, everything's a little bit different and everything is a different shade of gray and difficulty. You can have a tiny little bit of trouble breathing and breathe a little bit fast or you can be really, really struggling. Um, so parents need to use their common sense and judgment about that. But anytime I would tell any parent um, if you are worried that your child is having difficulty breathing, that is not something you, you, you fool around with. Obviously, it can get worse and children can really um, uh, have developed into respiratory failure and not, not be able to maintain their breathing on their own. 
So I would suggest any t anytime you're, you're really concerned, you should have somebody look at your child. Okay, and do that immediately, more, more, uh, more frequent or more consistent than, you know, maybe we'll wait a couple more hours, it sounds like, if you're really well, worried again, about it's all, like anything else, it's very, there's so many shades of gray and so many stages. Um, you, we wouldn't want to suggest that every parent take every child right. who might be coughing or congested to the emergency department. They would literally be overrun run with children. But again, if you feel like your child, particularly the younger they are, if they're actually having trouble breathing, mm -hmm. their, their chest is working, working in and out and they're retracting and they're just struggling or they can't eat or won't eat normally, absolutely have them seen immediately. Okay, other good points there and signs for you to look at as a parent or a caregiver. We're gonna take a quick break. We're gonna be right back after a few moments with more on RSV.